Good morning, everyone. Hot on the heels of Summer Game Fest. Today, I've got a slew of updates for you, including a newly updated game release schedule that I'm interested in. So we'll talk about all the games in the next several months that I'm planning on playing. Also, the schedule this week has been shaken up because of a sudden DLC drop that we're going to be playing all day long. And a huge update to Street Fighter VI. There's already another new character coming out within a month. Wow, that was a lot of info coming out of Summer Game Fest. All this and more on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, everyone. Good morning. It is Saturday, the 8th of June, 2024. Unlike yesterday, where we had a little weird, odd day because I was doing a live react to Summer Game Fest, today it's all gameplay here on DSP Gaming, which is a good thing. Makes you know exactly what's going on. Um, however, <laughs> this will certainly not be the case tomorrow. Tomorrow we are all over the place doing crazy stuff with the Xbox Showcase. So, let's get down to it, shall we? Yesterday was an interesting day because I basically did so many different things at different times. It was a little confusing. And also, I had some issues with uploading. So because of that, the videos were staggered. And a lot of people were confused about where's this video? What's that? Why is this dropping? And why did this not drop? So let me just kind of quickly go over what happened yesterday and summarize everything so you know where everything is and what's going on, okay? So we started off the morning normally with a podcast. And normally on Fridays, which is my day back from having a day off on Thursday... The podcast is very lengthy. Usually it's like a big, chunky podcast, but I had to react to Summer Game Fest at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And knowing that, I said, well, we can't do a long podcast. We have to try to actually do a big abridged one. So that's what I did. I basically turboed through it, covering things like my day off, the schedule, uh, you know, all kinds of updates and things on everything going on. And I rushed through it. There was no time for Q&A. There was really no time for shout-outs formally. We just kind of hurried through it and, boom, got to the meat of the stream, which was Fallout 4. Fallout 4, we played for about an hour and a half, and it was kind of interesting because uh, I didn't know what I was going to actually do in Fallout 4. I didn't want to do the main story, but also I hadn't been, like, engaged in any missions, so I was wondering what to do. <clears throat> so what happened was I headed into this area that ended up getting me to Vault 88, which uh, was actually a DLC that I had never done before. And it's weird because I did all the other DLCs for this game, but apparently this was one that kind of slipped through the cracks back in the day because it came out much later than the other DLCs in the game. So I went into this vault and there was a, an overseer who was a ghoul. You talk to her and basically what you're doing is you're going through the vault, knocking down walls with the crafting mode, unlocking secret areas and doing big ass fights against legendary monsters. Ended up getting a really cool piece of loot. And it was perfect because basically in the 90 minutes I played, I got through the combat portion. Now I guess what happens is you go through there building a vault. That's like the second half of the DLC. So for me, I think I played the first half, which was fun. I don't know if I'll do the second half or not. I'm kind of on the fence. It's really kind of up to you guys if you want to see me do it or not. But it was a good 90 minutes of fun in Fallout 4. And then what happened is, we stopped streaming here on DSP Gaming and swapped over to DSP Reacts. There, for two straight hours, I did a live react to the Summer Game Fest. Now, a few observations about doing this, okay? First of all, Summer Game Fest was broadcasting at 4K 60 frames per second. Because I now have the capability to see that on my TV, I purposefully set it all up so that I could see it at 4K 60 frames, and you guys were going to see... Uh, an upscaled 1440p 60 frames. Literally nothing at Summer Game Fest was at 60 frames. Every single presentation was 30 frames or like 24 frames. Nothing ever went above. So the entire thing was kind of silly. I don't know why they bothered broadcasting at 4K 60 frames when it didn't actually ever render at that. Okay. Um, in those two hours, <clears throat> we saw quite a lot of different things go down. Um... A lot of games finally got release dates, which we're actually going to go through today. I'm going to go through the game release list with you and tell you all the new updated dates that I'm interested in. 
Some gates got games got much needed updates and and uh and new info. Um surprise drops like today's DLC for Alan Wake 2. Um and a lot of games just showed off cinematic shit, which you don't even know what the game is. I just that scratches my head that they're still doing that in 2024. Like there was a few games, like it was a cinematic trailer. And I watched it and I would say to the audience, I have absolutely no idea what this game is. None at all. I'm just scratching my head like is it an action game? Is it a strategy game? What is it? It comes out in like a month. What the hell? I don't even know what it is, right? So why'd you even have it there? Like, you didn't pique my interest. All you did was kind of piss me off because you teased me with a game and you didn't tell me what the hell it is at all. So why do I care, right? So I don't ever understand how these companies still don't get it in 2024 that what do gamers want? Actual gameplay so they know what the fuck the game is. But anyway, I had a lot to say about different various things. There were even some things that annoyed me so much, I literally muted the fucking stream audio until it went away, because I was so annoyed. There was actually tons of paid ads and ad spaces during this event, and Kotaku had actually broke the story the night before. These companies, to get an ad run at Summer Games Fest, were paying a minimum of $100,000. Some of them paid upwards of over $500,000 to get an ad run during this event. What a bunch of assholes. I mean, I don't want to be advertised to. I want to know concrete information about new games coming out, which is more about informing than promoting, but it was all promoting, really. It was really just a big fucking shill fest. Um, so out of the two-hour show, I would argue maybe 30 minutes was kind of pertinent. The rest was a lot of fluff and a lot of bullshit. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about my thoughts. Why? Because I already did that, okay? So there's two videos live over on my DSP Reacts channel that you can check out. The first is the actual live React. That's two straight hours of reacting. And you want to know the funniest part about that? It got claimed for copyright, but wait till you hear what it got claimed for. The fucking intro when it counts down to when the actual event started, that's what got claimed. The entirety of the actual Summer Game Fest was fine. None of the music got claimed, none of the visuals. The fucking music they chose for the countdown intro got claimed. So this moron who set up this event didn't clear the music. And everyone who streamed it is going to get claimed for the fucking intro music. How dumb is that, right? Good news is I muted it. Because I was like, fuck this. I muted it, so now the video can actually be monetized. So yeah, if you actually watch Summer Game Fest, I can actually get some ad revenue on it, which is nice. It's a two-hour video. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy the live react, okay? <clears throat> now, immediately following that live two hours, I did a 40-minute recap reactions video and if you're not aware what that is this is what i used to do back in the day before i ever did live reacting i summarize everything that happened during summer game fest hitting each bullet point and giving you my opinion on each one it lasts about 40 minutes as opposed to the two hours of bullshit fluff i narrow it right down to the nitty-gritty and i have a lot to say about certain segments you'll want to watch that if you want my actual takes rather than just live reacts if you want a more informed take and also more condensed Check that video out. That's also live over on DSP Reacts right now. Okay? The bummer was, because I was trying to upload all this stuff at once, the live react didn't go live right away. It only uploaded halfway, and then it, it basically I had to wait for my late stream. And after my late stream, then I resumed the upload, and it did finish. So some people who were, like, waiting so for, oh, I want the live react right now, I couldn't give it to you. You know, that's the problem with YouTube and very large uploads on YouTube. They take forever. The longer the video, the longer the upload, and the longer the process, and tons of issues. So here I am trying to, you know, upload this two-hour video during a two-and-a-half-hour break, and it won't upload. It only uploaded halfway. Stupid. So anyway, all that is now live. Give it a look. I hope you enjoy it, okay? Then, last night on the late stream, it was Street Fighter Six Friday Night Fights, The Return of E! Honda. I played about a half an hour of casual play. And then I swapped over to ranked play, okay? And it's hilarious because after all the screaming and moaning and everyone saying play ranked, play ranked, play ranked, I didn't get a single extra person. I didn't get a single extra contribution. I got nothing special for playing ranked versus casual. It was exactly the same crowd. Everyone was happy. All those idiots that scre sit around screaming for ranked only didn't even fucking show up, okay? Here's the deal. I did pretty good, all right? Um, here's the stats, actually. Well, it would have helped if I didn't delete the stats. Hold on. Uh, there it is. Okay. So, 
Uh, I had 10 wins and 5 losses in casual matches. So I basically won half, you know, half as much as I lost. Then I went to ranked, and I had 21 wins and 16 losses for a 57% win rate. Not bad, especially because what I was losing to in a lot of these cases was stuff I haven't seen. Like this Aki gameplay, she is so different now with this balance uh, re readjusting. She plays much differently, and it has a lot of lockdown combos and hit strings that I wasn't aware of. So, you know, I'm getting trapped and baited and mixed up. I'm like, oh, crap. Okay, I didn't know that Aki can do this stuff. And I did lose to a few of them. Um, but I actually had some really good matches, too. I remember I had a really good match against a Luke and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of the matches were back and forth. I win one, they win one, final match, who wins? You know, it's down to the wire. My combos with Honda have dramatically improved. My strategies are improving. Okay, so if you like the Honda gameplay, you're going to see some really good Honda gameplay in this set. I hope that you'll check it out because I had a great time playing with him, and I feel like this is a character I want to continue to play. Here's the good news. With these rebalances, Honda seems viable now. I'm not saying he's ever going to be top tier, but he seems like way more fun to play and more playable. Previously, it was like, okay, throw out a headbutt, right? Throw out a body splash, hope that it hits, and that was it. Like, you couldn't really do much, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, basically, it was fun to actually now do other things with these hundred hand combos and things. And I'm really enjoying Honda. Uh, I hope you'll check it out. And again, I will be continuing him and getting better with him, hopefully over time. Okay, cool. You know, what's weird is I'm trying to see if by lamp it's working. I'm just trying to see the colors it's going between. Because half the colors are showing up as white on the camera here. And I don't know why. See that white? It's light blue. It looks white. Now it's dark. Uh, okay, that blue shows up perfect. It's just weird. I want to make sure the lamp isn't dying. Because this is a common lamp. I can get another one. Now it's dark blue. That showed up properly. Now it is white. Yeah, it's like a weird white. Yeah, it actually is the lamp. It's not. Now it's ye yellow green. And it still shows up as white. So when it turns yellowish green, it shows the same color. But then it goes blue. Oh, now it's supposed to be green. But it shows up as blue. <laughs> And now, now it's purple, and it shows up as pink. Okay. It's the, basically, the camera doesn't pick up half the colors is what it is. Okay. Anyway. All right. So, last night with Street Fighter VI, I had a good time. Now, we have some things to talk about, obviously, in regards to the game schedule updating as a, re a result of Summer Game Fest. Okay? What I'd like to do now is kind of go through the listing of games that I am most interested in between now and the end of the year. So basically, you can consider this segment of today's podcast a game schedule update, all right? So if you were looking for a game schedule update, I think the last one I did was on my birthday. So here we are two months later. <clears throat> Let's actually do a new game schedule update for DSP Gaming. Are you ready? All right, so obviously, we still have a few games left this month. The next one that I'm interested in playing outside of today's Alan Wake DLC Night Springs, which we're going to play all day, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, is going to be called Still Wakes the Deep. This is that first-person horror game where you're someone who goes to an oil rig where apparently all contact has been lost, and it's a horror game where you're walking around trying to figure out what happened. I guess everyone disappeared, and then there's monsters and possibly gore and stuff like that. So looks interesting. It's going to be a day one Game Pass game, so I'm going to check that out. That's on June 18th. Then, Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC on June 21st. Obviously, everyone is excited for this, including me. We're all pumped for it. Ready, gung-ho to play it. And that's what I geared up for over the last month, replaying and finishing that uh, magic run in Elden Ring. We're all ready, and that's exciting, right? I don't even have to say much about that. We all know I'm going to be playing the heck out of that. Uh, then, <clears throat> a possible game that I'm not committing to playing on June 25th, Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. This is the new Super Monkey Ball game. It's just that simple. I played one. It was very challenging and rage-inducing, but also you guys loved watching me play it. So maybe we would do this new Super Monkey Ball or not. It's just a possibility for the end of the month, okay? Now, here is the first shocking announcement from Summer Game Fest. Street Fighter VI is already doing its Season 2 expansion pass starting later this month. We just had Akuma two weeks ago, and people are still playing with Akuma and trying to figure out the meta, and figure out how good he is. Well, guess what? A new character is coming out in two weeks. That's kind of weird. Usually, it's not that fast. <clears throat> it is very odd that it seems like they're rushing out characters now for Street Fighter VI. Um, th what this also means 
is that that rebalance patch that happened with Akuma actually is the Season 2 rebalance. A lot of people were thinking, oh, well, when they release Season 2 formally, that's when they're going to fix the game. No, that's what this was. So all these changes to characters are sticking, and that's going to be like that for the whole next year, okay? <clears throat> Okay, so who's the next DLC character for Street Fighter VI? M. Bison, and he comes out on June 26th. Will I be checking him out? Yeah, I like the game enough. I think I'm going to get the next season pass, and I'm going to check out all these characters. The characters are M. Bison, Terry Bogard, the guest character from Fatal Fury slash King of Fighters, Elena from Street Fighter III Third Strike, and Mai Shiranui, a guest character from Fatal Fury King of Fighters. And is it weird that two of these characters are guest characters? Yes. Capcom has literally never done guest characters in Street Fighter like this before. There's been crossover games, but there's never been a game where formal entries into a roster of a numbered Street Fighter have been from other games. So it's weird. And some people are on the fence about it. Some people like this idea, and some people are staunchly against it. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if you were campaigning for some of your favorite characters of all time of Street Fighter to be in Street Fighter VI, and they're not in it, and now instead two spots are going to SNK characters, you might be like, what? Like, how is that? How does it make any sense? We are all are huge lifelong fans of Street Fighter. Where's Vega? Where's Boxer, right? Where's Dudley? Where's Makoto? Where's Karen? Where's, you know, I can keep going. Where's Gen? Where's all these characters from Street Fighter that could jump in there and be awesome additions to the cast? Instead, you add in two characters from another franchise, you know? And if you remember, I hate to say it, <clears throat> We just had a big disaster with Tekken 7, where when Akuma was added as a guest character, he ended up being the most overpowered character in the game. He broke the game and won tournaments for several years till they had to nerf him a, a bunch of times. It was just a, a, not a good idea. But now Capcom's going this route, okay? Now, here's the thing. I like Fatal Fury and King of Fighters. I grew up playing them alongside Street Fighter. I know all about Terry Bogard and Mai Shiranui. I even know how they used to play in those games. So for me, it's not like, oh, I'm blindsided. I know nothing about this. I'm totally informed and kind of know how to play with them. Of course, you have no idea how they're going to play in Street Fighter VI. They could be redesigned from the ground up. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm happy we're going to actually see versions of them in this engine because this graphics engine in Street Fighter VI is gorgeous. So to actually see, like, current-gen uh, versions of these characters rather than just, like, outdated King of Fighters versions is going to be pretty sweet. But at the same time, yeah, I would have liked other characters from the franchise like where are the characters that were like some people are so upset about sagat where's sagat why no sagat no sakura where's sakura i know rose i would have loved rose but no they're not they're not putting in any of these characters now they went with these guys and this is the whole year that's the thing they announced it this is the whole year's lineup so if you don't like this lineup you got nothing to do in street fighter 6 for a year come back in 2025 right okay now the thing is about m bison he's coming out on june 26th and they already released a gameplay trailer for him his story is that basically he's lost his memory since Street Fighter V. If you don't know, the actual chronology goes <clears throat> Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter II, excuse me, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter I, Street Fighter II, Street Fighter IV, Street Fighter V, Street Fighter Three, Street Fighter VI. I know that sounds really weird. It's because of Street Fighter III, they wanted to do this thing where they said, oh, wait, many years later, this happened, and that's why there's no Bison or anything like that, right? So apparently at the end of Street Fighter V, Bison died, but he didn't, because he's still alive. He just lost his memory, which doesn't really matter, because he's still evil anyway. And if you take a look, they showed his gameplay trailer. He plays the fucking same as Street Fighter V. Like, you're watching this trailer, it's like, okay, that's the same move for Street Fighter V, at least very similar move for Street Fighter V. Looks like he's going to play almost exactly the same as Street Fighter V. Like, almost everything's identical that you could see in that gameplay trailer. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, that's not interesting to me. Street Fighter V sucked, okay? In my opinion, the worst number Street Fighter ever made. I didn't like the gameplay style. It looks to me like he's going to be a character who's going to basically do this, this little pattern of, you know, he's next to you, oh, hit string, mix up, oh, I caught you with one hit, dig, juggle, drive, what? Okay, big deal. It's going to be the same exact gameplay. And I don't like that. Like, Bison used to be a very unique character in old school Street Fighter, and no one else played like him. Like, he was definitely different. Now, he's going to have this same kind of mid-screen, hit you with the counter poke, hit you with the combo. It's too it's too similar. I don't like that. I, I wanted something different. Bring back either Classic Bison or make a brand new version. You didn't need to have Street Fighter Five Bison back again. 
and, and quite frankly, I hate to say it, it feels like a waste of a spot. Because Bison, in the story, was dead. Now he's like, everything you knew is bullshit. He's back anyway. And what was the point? What was the point of you not even having him in season one? It doesn't even make sense. A whole year without Bison, but now he's back. He plays the same. So big deal. It's kind of like a non-announcement character to me. Um, and it is frustrating. So I don't know. You know, I wanted something new. Like I said last year when people asked me, what characters would you like in Street Fighter? Well, brand new characters that bring something new to the table and play uniquely. Right? I like variety in my Street Fighter. I like it that characters play completely differently. Either a character who's does pure rushdown, okay, but have like two characters like that, then have two characters that are pure keep away, have a few hybrids, have a few grapplers, right? Street Fighter 6, at this point, with its balance update, is doing a better job of taking the characters that aren't rushed down and trying to make them more viable. That's a great thing. But at the very same time, then to put Bison back in and he plays the same as Street Fighter 5, like you kind of missed the point, right? We don't need the same return character. It's almost it almost feels like Fan service. Like, they already intended to have him in there from the get-go, but they kind of teased, and now they're bringing, oh, look, well, we're giving you what you want. Well, not really. Like, there was no reason to not have him in Season 1. Like, what purpose did that serve if you were just going to bring him back and he plays the same, right? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, honestly, no, I'm not really that interested in him, but I'm going to get him and play with him and try him, but I don't know if I'm going to like him. Again, I don't like Street Fighter Five. So to bring back Street Fighter V Bison is kind of underwhelming for me. If you told me he was playing more like Street Fighter uh, 2 or Street Fighter 4, I'd be like, oh, okay. But Street Fighter V Bison, I really don't like. Anyway, um, so June 26th, will I be playing with Bison? Yes, I will. It'll be good because I'll have a few days of all like Elden Ring and then we'll go, we'll go to Street Fighter. Um, so there is the Luigi's Mansion 2 remake coming June 27th. That's a maybe just like Super Monkey Ball. Nintendo World Championships comes out July 18th. This is a special game for the Switch that pits a lot of classic NES games against the, a gamer doing basically a challenge run. What it does is it makes modified versions of these games where you're trying to either get points or scores or times. And it looks like it's going to be pretty fun um, in that regard. The question is, will my audience like it? Like, I know I would like it. And it would be really cool to do challenge runs and things, but I don't know if anyone else is going to like it, okay? Um, so there's that. Then on July 19th is this game Kunitsugami. I think it's something like Something of the Goddess. What's weird about this game is we saw it last year, and it looked like an action game, and everyone was like, oh, is that going to be like uh, like almost like a, a Soulsborne game or like um, Onim Onimusha? Or um, what's, what's the one? I can't even remember. Oh, Neo. Would it be like Neo? But now they showed it yesterday, and it so it looks so weird. It's like the combat is you're fighting an enemy, but the, you surround them with people. It's like you and other people, like your minions or teammates, are surrounding these enemies, beating them up. And it's like, is it a strategy game? Is it? You can't even tell what it is. Is it action based? Is it turn based? It's like confusing as shit. The weird thing is, this game comes out July nineteenth, and no one even knows what it is yet. Very very weird. So they're gonna have to start releasing a lot of information about this game, Kunitsugami, if anyone's gonna buy it. Okay. Um, then Black Myth Wukong is coming out August 20th. Now, here's a really weird thing, guys. All right. Two things about Black Myth Wukong that were revealed yesterday that a lot of people on the internet are not very happy about. Number one, Black Myth Wukong's physical edition actually is not a physical edition. Black Myth Wukong is going to sell an empty box with a download code inside. I'm serious. If you go to the store and you buy Black Myth Wukong, you don't get a game disc. You get a voucher with a code that gives you exactly the same game as if you bought it digitally. You get nothing physical but an empty box. Why? Oh, our, our limitations of production being that this is our first major game. Okay, but then why are you selling it physically? Just don't sell it physically then. Right? I think what it is is they're afraid that th what's going to happen to them is what happened to Alan Wake 2, where a lot of people said we're not going to buy it because we only buy physical. But this really isn't physical. It's just a box. You see? So I guess we'll see what happens there. That's number one. Number two, and this actually is starting to piss off a lot of people at this point. Um, Black Myth Wukong, day one, August 20th, is releasing on PC and PS5. And that's it. What do you mean? I thought it was fully cross-platform. It is, but they decided to delay it on Xbox. Huh? Yeah. The, the, the game devs came out and said, oh, we haven't perfected it on Xbox yet. It, it, so basically, uh, 
we're just going to delay that edition and we have no idea when it's coming out. So, you know what this tells me? The game's not done. Sorry, if the game isn't running well on, on the platforms that you're releasing it for, the game literally isn't done. I almost feel like at this point they're pushing it out. And how much do you want to bet this game is going to have performance issues on every... I bet on PC, PS5, it's going to probably run like shit. I almost guarantee it. It's sad because the game looks good, but I almost get the feeling this game's going to be one of those games. It's all this hype. Everyone buys it, and it's a piece of dog shit on launch. It's going to take them like two months to patch it enough to make it run well. That, I'm getting this vibe now, and this really is starting to make me worried because we were excited for this game for several years, and then to hear that, you're like, uh, that, there's a problem here. That doesn't sound good, right? <clears throat> anyway, um, so that's what we found out about Black Myth Wukong. Um, Concord, that game that they just showed during that Sony State of Play, and everyone was like, what the hell is this? We don't want this. Comes out August 23rd. Star Wars Outlaws is August 30th, and the weirdest part was they showed it at Summer Game Fest, but they barely showed anything. It was like, okay, so we know Jabba the Hutt and Lando are in it now, but outside of that, it was just her walking around, not doing much. And it's like, well, that doesn't really promote your game or tell us what it is. So it wasn't much of a of a big expose. I guess they're saying, I guess this week at some point, there's going to be an Ubisoft event, and they think that they're going to reveal more then. Okay. Um, Quidditch Champions, an actual online Quidditch game that probably should have been in Hogwarts Legacy but didn't make it. It's now being released on September 3rd. It's a separate online game with, you know, it's basically online competition. Um, and it is on PlayStation Plus day one, but the question is what level... Because it's weird. I was looking online and they were like, oh, it's a PS Plus day one title. That's great. But why aren't you saying PS Plus basic? Because I think it's a bait and switch. I think they're trying to trick people into thinking it's on PS Plus, but you have to pay for the better PS Plus to get it. In which case, how many people are going to do that? I don't know. But is it essential? Someone, Fred Rogers says, I looked it up. It is essential. If it's essential, that's good. I'll check it out. I have PS Plus essential to play Street Fighter VI. So I guess we'll have to look into this. Okay, so that's on the 3rd. Stalker 2, September 5th, unless it gets delayed. Uh, Astrobot, September 6th. This game I'm really excited for. A full-fledged game starring Astrobot. Remember that the Astrobot basically demo mini game that came with PS5 was basically the best launch title. It took advantage of the actual DualSense controller more than any other game. And to this day, no other games have really taken advantage of the controller. So I can't wait to play a full-fledged game like that. Um, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 on September 9th. Uh, Silent Hill 2 Remake, October 8th. Metaphor, October 11th. It finally got a release date. For those who don't know, Metaphor is the next game from the makers of Persona. It literally looks like Persona, but in medieval fantasy rather than, like, modern times. And it looks good, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Do I want to play it? Yeah, I do. Do I want to play it day one? Yeah, I do. Am I nervous about playing it? Yes, I am. Because Atlas has hit me with false copyright strikes for playing Persona 5. And then removed them. So, what happens if I start playing this game and Atlas Japan once again goes on a striking spree, hitting down channels for no fucking good reason at all? That would cripple me. I can't have DSP Gaming hit with copyright strikes. Then I can't stream, I can't do anything. So, I don't know what to do. I want to play Metaphor, it looks great, but I don't know if it's worth the risk. Also on October 11th, Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. I'm going to be honest with you guys, alright? I don't know if I should play it or not, because... I am tired of the same old Dragon Ball stuff. And that people are like, oh, but it's it's like bo bo uh, Dragon Ball Bodokai Tenkachi Kachi Bachi. Budokai Kachi. Huh? I know what that is. I know what Dragon Ball Z Budokai is and all of that. But the funny part is people are like, well, it's from the makers of that. And they haven't had one of these in like 15 years or whatever, however long it is. Yeah, but they've also had two Xenoverse games. They also had that other one. What was it Dragon Ball Kai or whatever it was? I can't remember what it was called. And those actually played similar to Budokai. They weren't the same, but they did play similar. So to say, oh, it's the first one of these in 15 years is kind of bullshit. It's like, no, they've been making games like this for like 20 straight years, and everyone ends up being the same. Really, they all end up being, it's the same fucking stories over and over, retold for the zillionth time. And listen, when I was early in my YouTube days, and hell, even up to like five years ago, all right, I don't play Dragon Ball games that often, right? But for me, like, now it's the same shit again. 
Budokai Tenkaichi actually translates to Sparking Zero. Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know what the hell it meant. So, for me, like, I'm like, okay, would it be good? I don't know. Like, I listen, I like Dragon Ball. I'm just tired of the same shit. I feel like if it tells the story of Super, which I don't know because I never watched Dragon Ball Super, then I might like it more because it's something new for me. But a lot of people are just going to be like fan service. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, I'm on the fence about it. I don't know if I want to play it or not. Well, maybe we get more information about the game and you guys let me know if you're interested in seeing me play it. I would be I would be considering it, okay? And then uh social. I'm supposed to say Sonic and this is social. I must have had a uh autocorrect happen here. Sonic X Shadow Generations October 25th. It's coming out. So, right now in June, we got Still Wakes the Deep, the Elden Ring DLC, and Bison and Street Fighter 6 as locks with other Nintendo games in there as maybes. In July, we got Nintendo World Championships and this Kunitsugami game. Um, in August, we've got Black Myth Wukong, Concord. I don't know if I'm playing Concord. Star Wars Outlaws. In September, we've got Quidditch Champions, Stalker 2, Astrobot, Warhammer 40k, Space Marine 2. And then in October, we got Silent Hill 2, Metaphor, DBZ Sparking Zero, and Sonic X Shadow Generations. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> we still have the Xbox event on Sunday, right? We still have an Ubisoft event on Monday, which, by the way, I'm not covering the Ubisoft event live. Two days of live reacting is enough. I'm not doing it more on Monday. I want to do my, my regular shit, okay? Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of events still coming up, and there's supposed to be a Nintendo event supposedly later this month. They're alluding to it. So, with all of that coming up, we may have a lot more games added to the schedule uh, very soon, okay? So, for now, it's starting to populate. I can tell you right now, it definitely looks like July is dead, right? It looks like the rest of June is full, but then July is, like, fucking dead. And then August, not till the second half. So we're going to have, like, the summer to do stuff. What? Well, we'll see. we got to figure out what we want to do with that time, right? But there you have it. That's what we're looking at right now. Um, okay, so... That is what came out of Summer Game Fest. Let's now talk about the schedule. I have a little bit of game news to cover, and then we'll do the shout-outs and everything there, okay? So, schedule. Today, we're playing the Alan Wake 2 Nice Springs DLC. Surprise, it released. All right? So, if you already had the expansion pass for Alan Wake 2, it's free. But if you didn't, you got to buy the expansion pass. So, how much is the expansion pass? Well, hold on a second. Oh, shit, I booted the game by accident. <laughs> I didn't want to boot the game. I wanted to go to the page. Here we go. So, where is the, uh, oh, here, I have to put it add-ons. Oh, crap, now I can't see the pricing because I bought it. Because I wanted to see how much, it oh, here it is. It's $16. The Alan Wake 2 Deluxe Upgrade, which essentially gives you the expansion pass, is $16. Now, here's the weird thing about that, okay? If you bought Alan Wake at launch, you paid more. Because a lot of people bought the like the special edition, the deluxe edition, and the only difference between the standard and deluxe editions is the expansion pass. So if you bought this game at launch and you bought the deluxe edition, you paid twenty bucks more for the same content that you could buy today for sixteen, and it's the same price or the same content. So you ripped yourself off. And I hate to say it, more and more people kind of get fooled by these passes. I mean, I literally a year ago got fooled by Street Fighter Six. I bought the ultimate edition, and it really didn't have anything special, so I kind of wasted money. And it's the same thing here. You basically cheated yourself out of a few bucks if you bought the, the uh, de deluxe edition or ultimate edition at launch. There's no benefit to have had it. You were going to get the same content, okay? Now, the DLC is supposed to be three different scenarios starring the waitress from the diner who had interactions with Alan Wake during the course of the game and apparently gave him items and things to help him in his journey through the dark place. The sheriff who was stuck in the dark place and you always ran into him in the safe rooms. Well, apparently it's going to tell his story. And get this, the main protagonist from Control, Jesse, is now in Alan Wake 2 as a playable character in her own scenario. Now she has powers. So this is going to be interesting to see how her powers are going to factor in to Alan Wake. Because, you know, everyone else is just kind of stuck in the dark place trying to, you know, survive. But she has the ability to do stuff. So I wonder how that's going to factor in. And at some po at what point did she actually get involved in the story? Is that like a post-story thing? Remember, she did show up once very briefly during the story of Alan Wake 
uh, uh, Alan Wake 2 on a TV inside of the hotel, but that was it. So you don't even know if she was ever actually there or not. Okay? Now, the way they pushed it yesterday at Summer Game Fest is, oh, well, this is what-if scenarios. But the weird part about that is, is it really? Like, these are what-if scenarios. Maybe the scenarios they play out are weird, like, oddball, like, episodes of a show. But maybe that's actually what they lived through. Because remember, The Dark Place is a story. You got Mr. Scratch writing this fictional story. So maybe he wrote what-if scenarios that sucked these characters into the story, and that's what this is. We won't know till we play it, all right? So I'm playing it all day today, first and second stream. Now, the thing is, no one knows how long it is because it just dropped a few hours ago. So by the end of today, everyone will have played it and know. I don't know. I, I don't think we're beating it in three hours. So that's why I have two streams reserved for it. If it's longer than that, then we'll, we'll play it again later this week, probably as a late night stream. But we'll see. I got to see exactly how long it is and, and go from there. I hope that you guys will uh, join me for it. And hopefully it'll be a good run, a good time. Now, if it ends up being insanely short, okay, which would really suck, uh, but what are you going to do? Let's say we beat it on this first stream. Then tonight on the late stream, I'll probably do Pro Country, which originally I was going to do as the day stream. But, you know, this came up. I'm like, well, I definitely want to play the expansion pass since it came out of nowhere, okay? So let's see how it goes. If we need both streams to beat it, great. If not, then tonight we'll do Pro Country, okay? So there you go. Um, tomorrow, I'm doing a live react to the Xbox Game Showcase at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So tomorrow is really weird. Number one, no podcast, no gameplay here on DSP Gaming to start. Instead, my stream is going to go live between 9.30 and 9.45 a.m. over on DSP Reacts. And we're going to do just like we did yesterday with Summer Game Fest. I'm going to live react to the Xbox event. And then immediately after that, <clears throat> I'm going to do my recap reactions. Uh, just like I did again, Summer Game Fest. So then when all that's done, which we don't know how long that's going to take because you got the Xbox event, which is rumored to be around two hours long. And then there's a Call of Duty Black Ops 6 event right after that apparently also is going to be like maybe 20, 30 minutes. So two and a half hours, then my recap reactions. We're talking four or more hours maybe, right? So let's see how long that goes. If there's time and there's a lot of extra time, I'm going to switch back over to DSP Gaming and we're just going to do some Fallout and chill for the rest of the stream until 4 p.m. But if there's not enough time, if maybe there's only like an hour left, then maybe what we'll do is just hang out and do like a little Q&A and interaction there. And that's what we'll do instead. So let's see. Let's see what happens. And we'll go from there. Tomorrow night on the late stream, it is Retro React Rise of Nightmares Co-op over on DSP Throwback. For those who don't know... Rise of Nightmares was one of the flagship Kinect titles to try to get people to buy the Microsoft Kinect when it was being introduced during the life cycle of the uh, Xbox One, the early Xbox. Excuse me, um, I take that back. It was the early life cycle of the Kinect on Xbox 360. This was before Xbox One. My bad, I, I forgot. I think it's like 2011, okay? This game is funny as hell for all the wrong reasons. It tries to be a serious horror game, but because you're using the Kinect, it barely works. Okay, so I remember doing a co-op with John Rambo. We beat the whole game in one afternoon. The game is incredibly short. I think it's like three hours long or something like that. Uh, maybe maybe like four or five, I can't remember. But I remember we did picture in picture. So we recorded our movements while we were playing this game and put it like superimposed in the corner. <laughs> this game is terrible. <laughs> it's, just, it's so bad. It, you know, it's funny to watch. Because we're commenting, we're trying to play it, and it's failing, it's not working. But it's just a piece of dog shit. Just like all the Kinect games and all the motion games, they weren't very good. So it's a very fun co-op playthrough, and we're going to do a retro react to that tomorrow night, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, on DSP Throwback. Okay? Then Monday is also now different. Monday's daytime stream, we'll have a podcast here, but then we're going over to DSP Reacts to do the weekly DSP versus the Internet Clips show. So I know this is throwing the whole schedule into the loop. And it's weird because, obviously, normally I'd be doing gameplay, but now i got to do the react show on Monday because I'm not doing it tomorrow because of this Xbox fan. Monday night, Street Fighter VI. And if I'm playing normally, I'm probably going to try Akuma. What I need to do is watch some Akuma videos because people have figured out all this tech in the last two weeks that I don't know yet. So i got to watch some Akuma videos, try to absorb that tech, and I'll probably try on Monday night again. If not, the thing is, I'm talking with Brian about when we're going to do our next session, and we're trying to hash it out. We haven't yet. It's going to be coming up, but I don't know when yet. It might be Monday, maybe not. I don't know. So if and when that happens, I'll let you know. But 
I don't want to like, you know me, I don't like to over promise and under deliver. So I'm not going to say, oh yeah, we're going to do it. And then it doesn't happen again. So <clears throat> I'll let you know if and when that happens. Okay. So that's uh Monday night, Tuesday, we'll finally get back to normal. All right. So Tuesday's daytime stream, I'll probably play Crow Country. Okay. And then Wednesday night, our Tuesday night is up in the air. We could do anything. And I'm thinking maybe we should do an indie game, whether it's Noita or it's Stardew Valley. I'll probably play one of those on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday will be Fallout 4 and Street Fighter 6. And that's my streaming week. I know. That's what a weird week with all these events and everything going crazy. But, you know, it's just a chaotic time. What can you do, right? <laughs> I can't really, I can't make it any more ordered simply because there is disorder right now with how all the timings are with all these events and everything. So, again, I certainly hope you will check out my live React stuff that I've got over on the DSP Reacts channel. Uh, like I said, both videos are live. And you can watch them. What I would say, though, please leave comments because no one really left any comments on the videos. And it's weird because you would think those are the kind of videos that would definitely have conversation going on, you know, what I was at the event and everything. And I'm looking and I'm like, these videos have been up now for like 12 hours and no one said a word. Yeah, no one said a word. There's no comments. I'm like, uh. So, hey, if you're enjoying those videos, please, by all means, uh, leave some comments. Okay, <clears throat> fair enough. Okay. Now, that's the schedule. Okay, I do have a little bit of game news to talk about today. Well, a little bit of news in general, I should say. Um, so we already talked about Black Myth Wukong. So I already got that out of the way. And we already talked about the Bison DLC in Street Fighter Six. I got that out of the way. So I kind of spoiled two news stories. There's an interesting news story to cover here. Get this. So this just... FYI, this is a news story that I'm reading from website The Verge, okay? But it is definitely pertinent to me and to internet culture and to the stuff. Get this. <clears throat> I'm going to read this word for word. This is a, a, an article from The Verge, okay? A YouTuber was arrested after posting a video showing two people in a helicopter shooting fireworks at a Lamborghini. On Thursday, so this past Thursday, the U.S. Department of Justice charged Suk Min Choi. Yes, the guy's actual name is Suk Min Choi, also known as Alex Choi on YouTube, for allegedly breaking the law against having an explosive or incendiary device on an aircraft. The now-deleted video, <clears throat> titled Destroying a Lamborghini with Fireworks, was posted on July 4th, 2023. Choi, who has more than 924,000 YouTube subscribers, is shown driving the Lamborghini as two women begin shooting fireworks in the direction of the car. Law enforcement officials believe Choi filmed the video at El Mirage, a dry lake bed in San Bernardino County, California. The Federal Aviation Administration began investigating the video in December, according to an affidavit filed with the Central District of California. The affidavit cites an email from what appears to be Choi's account saying he wants to record a video of an attack helicopter shooting missiles, mortar-style fireworks, at the car while the car is trying to run away and dodge the missiles using flares, Roman candle fireworks attached to the back of the car. As noted in the affidavit, the federal government alleges that Choi didn't obtain permits from the Bureau of Land Management or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives required to film this video. Choi was released on a $50,000 bond on Thursday with his arraignment set for July 2nd. He faces up to 10 years in a federal prison. As a side note, in 2022, Choi filmed and posted a video of a rented Tesla performing a jump in San Francisco and smashing into two parked cars. So, what's my take on this? I hate to say it, but this is where, sadly, YouTube is going. YouTube is going to the point where it's not about making content that has any meaning or worth. It's not about anything intelligent. It's about who can pull off the biggest prank, the biggest stunt, the dumbest fucking thing possible. And I hate to say it, a lot of this is the result of people like Mr. Beast and or the Paul brothers doing dumb shit on YouTube for attention. Now, I'm not saying that, for example, Mr. Beast has any done anything this irresponsible. I would assume that probably, since he's huge, he probably would have 
gotten the permit to do it, he probably would have made sure that it was legal to shoot fireworks out of a helicopter if he wanted to do it. But the point I'm making here, all right, is that when you turn YouTube into a place for just big stunts and stupid events like that that are completely fucking meaningless, everyone follows suit because they chase the money, right? They look at someone like the Paul brothers running around doing dumb shit and Mr. Beast it fucking doing, oh, I buried myself for five days and I fucking did this crazy thing. And then they say, well, I can do that too. And you got a guy, he doesn't even have a million subs and he's doing crazy stunts. He's renting cars and wrecking them. He's doing all this shit, right? So it's just, to me, I hate to say it, but this is the slippery slope. This is what's happening now is YouTube has become a very different place than what it used to be. It used to be a place where you could go and you could find people who have passion and intelligence and, and skill, and they want to share that with the world, but they just don't have the production budget to do it, right? Instead, YouTube has become, we go into it with a giant production budget. We're renting Lambos and helicopters and doing professional film, you know, filmmaking shit to put a dumb video out that hopefully you will fucking watch and we'll make a million dollars on it because it gets like 30, 40 million views. That's YouTube now. It's a bunch of bullshit stunts. It's completely the opposite of the spirit of what YouTube was supposed to ever be. And the problem is for every person who maybe does it right, like Mr. Beast, you're going to have a hundred wannabes, a hundred copycats, a hundred idiots who keep pushing the envelope to as far as the limits will go. Well, this dumbass, he went past those limits. He committed several crimes doing this. And essentially, he's getting, he's getting, the, he's the first one really who's going to get bit in the ass for it. This is, that's why this is like big news with The Verge and everything, because never has this really happened before. Everyone usually just gets away with everything on YouTube. But now, finally, the law went after this guy, got him. He's in big-ass trouble, $50,000 bond, and he could go to jail for years for this, right? The funny part is, even if he doesn't, you know what they're going to say? You can't make these fucking videos anymore. You're done. You're, you are done making this shit. If you make another video like this, we're just going to fucking you know, throw the book at you and put you in jail for a million years. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I hate to say it, but yeah, YouTube is really uh, not going, doing too good. And this, why? There's only one actual group to blame. The people who run YouTube. They are solely responsible. Because they are the ones who allow this dangerous content on the site. They are the ones who monetize this dangerous content on their site. And they all hide behind that one law that says, oh, but that law says that we're not responsible for anything. At all. Like, we could just, anyone could upload anything to the site. And if people group report it, we'll remove it. But we're not responsible for anything at all on YouTube. At, you know, how dare you even say that we're responsible? It's their fault. They're the ones who created the Wild West atmosphere. And they're the ones who are promoting and advertising on the dangerous content. So it's their fault. And, I mean, if you, if you want to be honest, yeah, the management at YouTube should be routed. They should all be fired and thrown out. And they should actually hire professionals who know what the fuck they're doing who are actually going to run it like a business and are actually going to take this stuff seriously because right now this is dangerous. You can't have this level of fucking misbehavior making the law, make, committing crimes. This is the tip of the iceberg. For those who don't know, YouTube has become increasingly more dangerous as a place to make money. There are family vloggers, all right? Basically people who have a bunch of kids and they film everything their kids do. They fucking go out there to show where they go to school they show their lives at home. They do stunts and dumb videos to get million click views. Then they try to get sponsorship deals with toy companies and food companies and shit like that. It's very dangerous content. And it's continuing to get worse and worse. I'm not just saying, you know, this one kid, this Alex Choi was the problem. It's all of YouTube is getting worse. And it's all for this. It's all because YouTube has allowed dangerous content to become profitable. And no one is policing it. It's going to get worse and worse. I'm telling you. You're gonna be, I don't know how people think this is gonna this is gonna su succeed. I mean, this is just gonna degrade further and further down until eventually. Oh, now the camera's crooked. I have to straighten it. Until eventually, uh, someone's gonna get hurt seriously, or the site's gonna be shut down. Because I hate to say it, they think they're gonna hide behind this law forever. Someone's just gonna change the law. I hope they understand that, and that's gonna fuck up the whole internet. If they don't actually start working to self-police this site with the kind of content they allow to be monetized, 
they're going to lose their ability to just have everything, you know, not monitored. I hate to say it. They are. They're going to lose it. They're going to, our lawmakers are going to change the fucking laws and YouTube is going to fucking fail. They've got to be more serious about it. But instead, oh, everything's automated. Everything's hands off. It's not our problem. Self-policing community. Yeah, you guys are fucking unprofessional, irresponsible fucking D-bags. You're going to ruin everything for everyone because you don't want to do any work. Okay. Anyway, that's that. I just want to see. Yeah, I'm centered now. Now I'm centered. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's the news for today. Uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is do some shout outs and, uh, and then we'll see where the show takes us. So first of all, we start with Abdullah who did a super chat and says, hold on. I got a, I got a burp. Maybe I don't. I felt like I had to burp and then it went away. That's annoying. Okay. Abdullah did a super chat. And he says, do you think the store in Street Fighter 6 is expensive? I spent $217 yesterday buying things from the in-game store, including the year two pass ultimate. Yes, the in-game store is a nickel and dime expensive venture. Like, I would love a lot of those outfits and colors. I would love to buy more soundtracks that I don't have and put it in the game. But I'm not going to keep dropping a ton of money. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not. I'm not going to do it. Um... I know that it would probably make my experience a little bit nicer, but it's all just frivolous shit. It's the same game at the end of the day. I'll be honest, since I've got those soundtracks, dude, I, I'm actually enjoying my, my play a lot better. I don't like the Street Fighter Six soundtrack. It literally is like, you know, stabbing my eardrums with a fucking knife. It's, it's terrible ear garbage, like dribble, you know? But at the same time, I don't want to spend any money on this thing, you know? I think I spent like 10 bucks to get the digital currency to buy some of the soundtracks put it in and it has improved our experience so but i'm not going to spend 217 bucks buying outfits colors and music that's ridiculous you know season pass coming up all right four new characters that's content for the year sure i'll buy that and i'll be honest this season pass is more appealing to me than the last one fucking ed i will never play ed just say i have no interest in ed i don't care about him for street fighter 5 i definitely don't care about him in this game fucking stupid character um but hey SNK guest characters who I've played with in other games, Elena from Street Fighter 3, and Bison. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. That's more interesting to me. So, 217 bucks. I don't know, man. That's a lot of money uh, to be buying. Uh, so, but yeah, of course it's expensive. That's absolutely ridiculous. If the base game right now is being sold for $30, but then you spent $217 in expansion content, I think uh, you kind of bought into the formula. That's exactly what they wanted you to do. That's how they're making their money on this game over time. So you kind of fell into it. Um, okay. We have a couple tips to shout out. First tip is $3. From Super Snow Carl Turbo HD Remix. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't the guy who created Fiddle Fury the co-creator of the original Street Fighter? That I don't know. I have no idea. It could be right. You could be right, but that's really old school <laughs> trivia. I don't know who the original creators of Fatal Fury were or anything like that. What I will tell you is this. A lot of the games back then were very samey. You know, Street Fighter 2, okay, Fatal Fury, World Heroes, Fighters History. I can keep going on. There's like seven or eight games that almost feel like you're playing exactly the same game because they either all came out exactly the same time or were trying to bite off each other within like a year to try to ride this wave of fighting game popularity. And... I wouldn't be surprised if in a lot of cases, very similar people were involved in the development of multiple different games for different companies and took a bunch of paychecks. Uh, but I don't, I can't answer that for sure. And then I received a $5 tip from uh, Abdullah. He had said in chat, you know, I tipped you, but I forgot to put a message. And I think that's why he super chatted. So thank you, Abdullah. Abdullah, yes, okay. Unless you'd like me to, you know what, I'll just do your, your, your online name here that you use. There you go. And I gotta play you an animation, of course. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the $5 tip. Okay. All right, so, FYI, let's see how this DLC goes today. Like I said, if we beat it on the first stream, great. If we don't, I'll finish it up on the late stream tonight. If we beat it on the first stream, then we'll probably just do some Crow Country tonight. Um, we'll do a little Audible or whatever. 
tell. Oh, there's an H in his name? Oh, shoot. You're right. There's an H after the K. There we go. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, guys, I hope you'll hang out with me today for some fun stuff. This DLC hopefully is interesting and good. And uh, I hope that you'll hang out for the stream after the podcast ends. Stick around for some fun. Um, and, of course, please consider supporting the streams today in any way. You know, this is how I make my living. So, super chats, super stickers, membership, gifted memberships, tips, all appreciated. My goal is to hit 50 bucks on a stream of tips. That's kind of the baseline goal I have for every stream that I consider it. Oh, we did well on that stream. So, if you like this stream, consider tipping. But everything is appreciated, okay? <clears throat> uh, Jade. 36 months as a member. Thank you so much, Jade. Enjoy your diamond crown. He says, sup, how about Cody or Vega or Ibuki or Makoto in Street Fighter VI? This is what I mean. Like, I think a lot of people want those characters. They want the classic characters back. And the fact that they're putting in guest characters from SNK instead of that is upsetting some people. So I kind of understand that reason for being upset, okay? Abdullah says, I'm a really good player and I enjoy watching Phil play. Wow, well, thank you. I don't, I don't consider myself a great player. I feel like... Now that I've completely reduced the input delay, the more I play, the better I'll get. And maybe at some point I will be good. I don't think I'm good right now, though. Uh, Princess Consuela popping their one-month membership notification saying, I was looking forward to Stardew tonight. There was no Stardew tonight. There never was Stardew scheduled for tonight. I don't even know what you're talking about. It was supposed to be Crow Country and then maybe doing an indie game tonight. It was either going to be Noida or Stardew. We hadn't decided yet. We were going to talk about it today and decide. So you're sad about something that literally wasn't even scheduled to happen. <laughs> How much is the DLC? If you're talking about for Alan Wake 2, it is $16. So let's see how good it is and, you know, if it's worth 16 bucks or not. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, I've talked about my topics that I wanted to talk about. I've shouted out the contributions that have come in so far. If you want to tag me in the chat, please do. We'll have a little bit of Q&A. Or if any other contributions come in, I will shout those out. Okay? Thank you. Dark Souls Master, how are you doing today? It just hit afternoon. He's a good evening, Bill. It just hit afternoon for me. It's 12, 11 p.m. here, so... Good afternoon to you, Dark Souls Master. Sounds like you're in a, a place with a different time zone from me. Do I miss playing Tekken? Asks Thoughtlink. Listen, I like Tekken. I do. It was actually a fun franchise. It was my first 3D game franchise because I didn't play Virtual Fighter. That was the first one I played was Tekken back in the 90s. Uh, it was fun for the month and a half I, I got into it <clears throat> to get pretty decent at it. I wasn't great, right? I got to the purple ranks, which is pretty good rank. People say it's like one level before like the final level of what people consider like pro level. Um, that's probably the highest I was ever going to get, even if I worked hard. But the thing is, <clears throat> there's no way I can try to play more than one fighting game at a high level at a time. I just don't have time for it. And if I had to choose between Tekken and Street Fighter, my roots are in Street Fighter. And in particular, Street Fighter 6, I like way more than, say, Street Fighter 5, which was trash. I do like the game a lot more. So... I'm not sad that I'm not playing Tekken. Is it? Is it a little bit maybe sad that, you know, I was getting good at it and I dropped it? Yeah. I can see why some people might be sad, especially if you really liked Tekken. But I, I like it, but, you know, I'm not, like, disappointed or depressed or upset that I'm not playing it. I, I have a competitive fighting game I'm playing, right? Generation Z, I have no idea why Elena's song is not in the Third Strike soundtrack you buy in Street Fighter Six, and it's even weirder because now she's going to be an expansion character. It doesn't make sense at all. Very odd. Uh, Tub Tubs is wondering why I'm considering playing Metaphor, saying it's probably going to be another 100-hour RPG, and you have unfinished ones now. Yeah, but the point is that the ar unfinished RPGs I have now, no one really cares about. Let's be honest. Does anyone want to see me go back to play Dragon's Dogma 2 at this point? The game actually was was uh, pretty underwhelming. Most people who actually played through the whole game don't like it. They already said, yeah, it just gets boring in the middle. As for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, every once in a while we get one or two people. We have There's literally one dude who every day leaves a comment on a video, when's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out? 
and he's literally the only dude. And every once in a while, we get someone here who asks for Final Fantasy VII, rarely. But I think, that, again, those games, the hype for them is dead. They released at a time that was an awful time to release, early on in the year at the same time as too many others, and they cannibalized each other. Now no one cares about them, including me. Like, I'll be honest, I own both of them. And I'm like, do I really want to go back? Probably not. You know, I'm not saying no forever. If I was to go back, it would be Final Fantasy VII. I'm probably never touching Dragon's Dogma 2 ever again. I can't even believe they released it like that. It's pretty much a boring-ass rehash of the first game. It doesn't seem good at all. Um, <clears throat> but Final Fantasy VII, like, I can see it. Some people may be wanting it, but it would have to be something balanced with a bunch of other stuff people want, because you know what's going to happen? Same thing when I played it new. I played it new, and people weren't showing up. They were bored and saying the game's fucking boring. So... Now, here's the thing with Metaphor. Number one, from the makers of Persona. That's a hype group. People love those games. It's got its dedicated fan base. People actually loved when I played the other Persona games. Uh, and, you know, probably would be hype to see me play the new one from those makers. And it's going to be the hot new RPG of the fall. If you take a look right now at the fall lineup, there's no other RPGs. There's nothing else to coincide with this to say, oh, it's too much of the same. So that's actually good release timing, right? Hmm. There you go. Oh, let's see here. Cool spot. Thanks for six months as a member. Do we have time for a suggestion box? No, we do not. I received a dollar twenty-five tip. Listen to this. This is great, dude. Stop playing low-tier Street Fighter Six characters. I'm sick of watching you complain. Play, play a high tier. Rank them to master. Make it a challenge. It's new content. Do something else. Your Street Fighter Six streams are boring. Me. <laughs> maybe i extrapolated a little bit on the end there all right but you understand how bad this comes across read your comment dude you're bitching and whining because someone doesn't want to play top tiers in a fighting game and got five characters to master and actually is doing well last night i won more than i lost in master with honda and i'm on my way up so what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> oh my god don't play characters you like to play with play with the characters that you don't like force yourself to pick to pick tiers you don't want to play with and play styles you don't enjoy because i'm a whiner thanks for the dollar 25 tip though there you go <laughs> uh, i received a two dollar tip from August. I was hoping for Stardew Valley tonight. I'm not a fan of Alan Wake 2. I'll sit this stream out, but I guess have a good one. It's all good, August. Uh, I know. And I, we already said that with Summer Game Fest coming up, that it was a possibility that something was going to shadow drop and, and kind of throw a monkey wrench into the plans. And that's exactly what happened. But don't worry. As I said earlier, I hope you're still here to hear this. Um, Probably either either... Well, first of all, tonight we're probably going to do Crow Country. If I beat this DLC on this stream, we'll do Crow Country tonight because it was supposed to be the day stream. But I still have an open stream like Tuesday night. And if people are down and they want Stardew Valley, then we can do Stardew Valley Tuesday night. If that's what you guys want, I'm okay with that. If it seems like there is a group that wants Stardew Valley at this point, correct? So if that's the case, I'm okay with Stardew Valley on like Tuesday night. And if you want to lock it, then we can lock it in. And that way people won't be disappointed. If that's what people want, is that what people want? I'll listen to feedback. Let me let me hear your feedback. If that's what you want Tuesday night, we can do it. Okay? <clears throat> okay. All right, so what would you guys like? What, what else do you want to talk about? We have a little bit of extra time. Sea of Stars, I'm probably going to bring back this summer. If you didn't just hear the schedule we went through, um, July and August are almost dead. Like, all, almost all of July and pretty much the first two to three weeks of August. That would be a good time to bring back Sea of Stars as a night stream and let's do the second half of the game and beat it. That's what I think we'll do, okay? Because I do, I love Sea of Stars. It was a really good game. <clears throat> I think we'll do Tuesday night then, Stardew Valley, everyone. We'll, we'll make it, a, make it a, an official thing so everyone knows to come by Tuesday night for Stardew Valley and see how it does as a late night stream. I'm okay with that. Is there anything I miss about streaming on Twitch? Asks Shifty's 49ers Talk. Um, I miss the 
uh, the extra features on Twitch, for example, <clears throat> the channel points system where people earn channel points by watching and then they can like wager them. And we did special streams where it was like, oh, challenge run in this game or that game. Wager if I'm going to get a certain amount of kills in a Call of Duty or if I can beat a certain stage in Super Mario in a certain amount of time. Like those were really, really fun. They don't have anything like that on YouTube. And sadly, there are bots and things you can get to do it. But then the bot, the thing is with YouTube chat, it's already running poorly. So you don't want to, you don't want to in, in, inundate the chat with a bunch of bot shit. Oh, you got this many points. You got this many points. And on Twitch, it's better than that, okay? <clears throat> but outside of that, outside of the whole Twitch basically has a better chat system. The only other thing, quite frankly, is the Prime memberships. That if someone has an Amazon Prime subscription, they get one free Twitch sub a month. So you get that Prime sub. A lot of people gave me their Prime sub. I mean, I'm not lying here when I tell you I probably made a couple hundred dollars a month on Prime subs, and I don't make it anymore. You know, that's a that's a big negative. Why YouTube still has not instituted something like that, I have no idea. Besides the fact that they just don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're behind the times. They don't listen to trends. They are always behind the eight ball. The management is absolutely atrociously bad and should all be fired. That's probably why. But outside of that, yeah, I don't know. So those are the two things. I would say channel points which led to like fun wagers and things like that and challenges on streams and definitely prime memberships. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Bring back a fishing game for chill gameplay. We could, if there is one, if there ever is a new fishing game, I'd be happy to play it. There just hasn't been one in a while, right? Abdullah says, I have an old channel on YouTube. I made it in May 2006, but I forgot the email and password, but it still exists. If you have ch videos on it, you're okay. If you don't, it might get deleted. Remember, YouTube is getting rid of old legacy channels with no content on them. So you, it might actually end up getting deleted. Hopefully, you have some content on there. Tub Tub says, I think the Xbox Series S could be stopping Wo, Wo Long from coming out, just like the Baldur's Gate 3 situation. As much as you could be correct, it, it's pretty much a very likely assumption. I'm starting to feel skeptical about Wolong. The weird thing about Wolong is that this game comes out in August in two months. We haven't actually seen any gameplay. You realize that, right? Everything that we've ever seen of this game was in a controlled, pre-rendered environment. We haven't seen any actual real gameplay live of this game anywhere. Why is that? I get, I'm very skeptical. I think it runs like shit. I think this game runs awful. And they're going to sell it, and you're going to buy it, and put it on your PC and PS5, and it's going to be choppy as fuck. And people are going to be like, what the fuck happened? Did I say Wolong? I meant to say, um, not Wolong. What did I, I said the wrong thing. Oh, well, that's because Tub Tub said Wolong. That's why I said that. It's Wukong. Tub Tub's typed Wolong, so I've been saying Wolong, and I meant to say Wukong. So I'm talking about Wukong, not Wolong, okay? So... With, the, with Rukong, all right, you have literally never seen someone pick up a controller and play this game yet. All you've seen is what they want you to see from a pre-rendered environment, right? So I really am skeptical about this. I get the feeling this game does run like shit. That Wukong, it looks nice from what they want you to see, but since we've never actually seen it in action yet, outside of their controlled environment, I'm, I'm nervous. Blackmouth Wukong, I don't know. I want it to be good. It looks like it could be great, but I am very nervous about this. <laughs> it's just weird. The game goes out in two months. Summer Game Fest. Let's hype it up. Oh, we're just going to show an FMV. Huh? Why not show us an epic thing about the game? Now here's some FMV stuff. We saw more two years ago than we saw this year. <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck? Jade says, I would love to see Jasper today. Can you do Skeletor's voice? Well, Jasper won't be around. Jasper's always around on days with my wife's at work. Typically early week, like Monday, Tuesdays. Sometimes there's odd streams here or there where he also joins us. But usually it's like early in the week. So he won't be here today. Um, as for Skeletor's voice. <laughs> T-Man, I think that Wukong's going to suck. Bad frame rates. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> All righty then.
<laughs> Skeletor raging. He's trying to play. He's trying to play back with Wukong, and the frame rate's dipping. Nah, what is this shit? Give me sixty frames. I can't respond. Nah. <laughs> Generation Z, yes, as I've already said, I would much prefer Street Fighter characters over guest characters. I already said that, yes. No, Ken and Terry Bogart are not the same. <laughs> no, no, no. Do I think real-time strategy games would be conducted with my audience? No. I don't... My audience wants action. My audience wants... Gore and horror, death, challenge. That's what they want. Like, slow paced stuff doesn't usually work unless it's like a super hyped game or something. Or, a, a, you know, a franchise with a huge fan base, AAA style stuff. I don't think RTS would ever work on this channel, just being honest. Yeah, I don't know why they chose to add guest characters to Street Fighter 6 this early. I mean, we're only heading into the second year of the game, and they're already putting guest characters. It's bizarre. You would think you want to focus on your core audience, your core group of people who are all clamoring for... Have this character in there. Have this character in there, right? Delk did a super chat. He says, the two things that interest you about Summer Game Fest were Street Fighter 6 and Alan Wake, two games from last year. I agree, Killer Bean will be game of the year. Killer Bean looks hilarious. I wish it had a release date. They just said summer. But it looks good. I am nervous, though, that it's going to be PC only, and I probably won't be able to run it. But it looks great. Like, I, that's funny as shit. Fear and Hunger is a gory horror game, but a slow burn. I don't know what that is. Fear and Hunger? I don't know. Never heard of it. Is it PC only? Is it on Xbox? UFL Open Beta. What the fuck is UFL? Oh, it's fucking football. Uh, wow, excuse me. Layer. Wow, million layers of fear. Nope. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas and fear and loathing in Aspen. What the fuck is fear and loathing in Aspen? The true story of an American band of misfits using establishment rules to challenge establishment rule. 1970, Hunter S. Thompson threw his hat into the ring for Sheriff of Aspen, Colorado. Oh, my God. Seriously? Alrighty, then. <laughs> it's PC only? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Dark Maggot says, Do you think we'll get a Capcom versus SNK game? I'd love one developed by Capcom to see what they can do with the SNK characters. So that's, that's what CVS was. Capcom versus SNK 1 and 2 was Capcom design. There was no SNK influence in it. They just used the wide roster of SNK characters and turned them into essentially Capcom characters. Um, that was a long time ago, though. <clears throat> you know, like, that was a very long time ago. So, I don't know with the limitations of what you can do now with modern games. For example, like, CBS 1 and 2 have giant rosters, but why? Because a lot of the sprites are reused. A lot of the sprites are easy 2D sprites to, to generate. You know what I mean? Today, imagine if you had like a Capcom versus SNK game and had a roster of 30 characters, but it, 30 at launch. You know, Street Fighter 6 had what, 18, I think? Something like that. Imagine having 30 characters at launch. Like, that's insane. Like, most games today would never have that many characters at launch. So, <clears throat> I think because of the limitations of modern day technology, because everything has to look so nice now, you probably wouldn't be able to even do like a game like that with a good roster. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but. I just couldn't see. I don't know. Maybe they could do it if they, if it played like classic CVS one and two. That would be amazing because those games, there hasn't been a game like that in a million years. The closest would have been Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but then they fucked it all up. Stupid gems and fucking Andis DLC, and you know they just fucked the whole game up, which is stupid because it wasn't an awful game. They just they shot themselves in the foot there. So I would like a game like that. I feel, but I don't know. I don't know if they would ever do it. I don't know if they think that if SNK is big enough. Like, as a couple guest characters in a season pass, sure. To base an entire game around it, that I don't know anymore. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Abdullah says Killer Bean is listed on Google as being on PlayStation 5, 4, Switch, Xbox One, and even more. Wow. Okay, cool.
There is going to be another expansion for Alan Wake 2 called The Lake House, but no release yet. So today we got Night Springs, and there'll be another one for the same price because I got the expansion pass for 16 bucks. You'll also get another expansion down the road. Okay. So it wasn't just 16 bucks just for this expansion. Gotcha. No, I never played any of the Arcana Hearts games. Did you buy Super Smash Brothers Ultimate? That's up to you if you like party games or not. Well, Brian, if I do beat this DLC on the stream, like I said, tonight we'll do Crow Country on the late stream. I'm okay with that. I'm craving Crow, Crow, Crow Country. I love playing it back on, what was it, Tuesday? I can't wait for more, and we're supposed to do it right now, but this came out of nowhere, so... Yeah, I saw the entire season one of Power Rangers. That's when it was new on TV. And I was, as a kid, I was fascinated at what I was watching. At first, I'll be honest, I thought it was awful. And then it kind of grew on me. And I was like, okay, it was weird. At first, I literally thought it was a joke. I was like, how bad could the show be? And then I was like, oh, I kind of get it now. <laughs> no, Street Fighter 6 season two is not $50. I don't know who told you that. It's 30 it's 30 bucks. I think there's an ultimate edition that may give you credits to buy other shit in the game, but that's a different version. Who's an underrated character in Street Fighter that needs more recognition? Hakan. What happened to Hakan? He came he was in Super Street Fighter 2. He was low tier, but I still played with him in one. Did really well with him. Then they changed him and changed his whole build, and I didn't like him as much anymore. And then he disappeared. No one ever talks about him. Like, he never existed. What happened? What's wrong with Turkish oil wrestling? I don't understand. All right, Derek, enjoy that barbecue. If you bought the $100 version of Street Fighter VI at the beginning of the game, that was that was the launch version. That only included Season 1. You still have to buy Season 2. Yes. Okay, let me look. It would be on here, too. I got my Xbox on, but... Street Fighter VI. Let's look here. Go in the store. editions. I want to look at the page, but the ugh, fucking dumb thing. Why did you take it away? What a dumb fucking thing. There's the year one character pass. Here it is. Year two, yeah. So, there's two passes. There's the year two regular character pass, which includes the four new characters, their outfit colors, three through 10, and 4,200 drive tickets. Okay. And then there's the ultimate pass. I think that's the one that's 50 bucks. So the difference is you also get outfit two and outfit three. And you're going to get two new stages, and you get 7,700 drive tickets. So basically, you're going to get all four new characters, all three of their outfits as they release, and all of their colors, and two stages, and you don't have to spend anything. And then you get drive tickets that you can use on other stuff. Likely, I would use that for the other music that I don't have that I want. Like, I would probably get Alpha 3 soundtrack and put some Alpha 3 tunes in there, stuff like that. So yeah, and how much is that? That's probably the 50. Yep, that's the 50. So it's 30 just for the characters. For 20 more, you get all of their outfits, all of their colors, two stages, and drive tickets to spend on stuff. So there you go. What will I get? Good question. I got to get one. Do I care about the outfits? Maybe. Maybe I'll like the alternate outfits better. Uh, I definitely would like the stages, and I definitely would like the drive tickets to buy the other soundtracks. One of the sound dude, one of those soundtracks is like seven thousand. It's insane. Seven fucking thousand drive tickets. That's in that's wild, wildly expensive. 
<laughs> Out of control. Ooh, excuse me. But that's how they get you. I mean, Street Fighter 6 is 30 bucks. But if you want any of the, the ongoing content, you got to spend, 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 baby. That's how they get you with these games now. Games as a service. Radical Jaws says, do you think that Mega Man will come out with a new a game in the near future? What's your opinion on the series? I wish they would. I love Mega Man. I wish that there would be more. You know, at one point, Mega Man was coming out with games all the time during the Battle Network days and stuff like that. Like, Mega Man was very prominent in the 80s and 90s, the original Mega Man games, then Mega Man X series, right? Then Zero series, then Battle Network, and then all of a sudden, dead. Then they brought him back for some retro throwback 9 and 10, remember that? And then after that, it's like, like he doesn't exist. I don't know what happened. I want. I would love another Mega Man. Alan Ray did a super chat, so I hope Street Fighter Six will put in Elena's song now. Yeah, I don't know. Again, we were just talking about that. Why that was not in there, I don't know. How do you purchase the Third Strike soundtrack to use in the game and it doesn't have the tracks? It's missing a track. Bullshit. Claire's actress has confirmed they are remaking Resident Evil Code Veronica. Good. Remember I said Code Veronica and Zero are the two they should remake? That's good. That's good shit. I will be all over that. I liked the game the first time I played it many years ago. Ball, pock, beef, Franks. Jump scare. Remember that? And I would definitely play the remake. Sounds good to me. Yeah, Mega Man 11 was 2018. That's right. Mega Man 11. I played it, right? Yeah. right they should remake the game boy color re game there was a game boy color resident evil they were they were going to make a lot of different resident evil portable games right but i think most of them got like canceled yes the only way 2 dlc is out big mac right now we're playing it Night Springs. We're going to see how long it is. If it need two streams, we'll do two streams. If not, we'll do Crow Country tonight. So we'll see. This is the first of two DLCs, by the way. There's another one coming later in the year. The Nintendo DS has uh the uh the one starring Bar Barry, right? No, it was the one before that had Jill. I can't remember what it was called. I played it. I had it. I played it on like a trip. It's good. It's the one on the ship. And then they remade it for consoles. I played it later on YouTube. Forgot what it's called though. Is it Revelations? Resident Evil Revelations? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. I played that when I was on a trip. It was a really good game. I liked it. Alright, guys. Any last-minute stuff to talk about? Any other topics to cover before we get ready to wrap this up and get ready for Alan Wake DLC? And again, remember, please, if you can't support the stream today, anything appreciated, super chats, memberships, tips, and my goal is to hit 50 bucks by the end of the stream. It would be great if I could. You thought that Akuma and Ryu were father and son? <laughs> nope. Basically rivals. Akuma was the first pupil of Goken, who is the, the guy who teaches everyone this Shotokan karate style. Um... And basically, he turned evil. He's kind of like, you know, Darth Vader, where at first he was trained by the Jedi to be good, but then he turned on the Jedi and became evil and used everything he did he could for evil purposes. So same thing. Akuma was taught the way to fight, but then awoke a dark power inside of him, right? And that turned him into an evil entity, a demon-like. <clears throat> and then I think in the plot line, supposedly he kills Goken. 
But then he was in Street Fighter 4, so I don't understand that because he was supposed to be dead. So I don't actually know what the real plot is anymore. I have no idea if Kat has seen Back to the Future or not. <laughs> 672 says characters that die in fighting games always end up coming back somehow yeah you know like when they get thrown off cliffs repeatedly <laughs> but they're perfectly fine <clears throat> exactly right yeah because that's what it was supposed to be is that Ryu and Ken were taught by Goken and they, they lived different lives Ken ended up being like a millionaire playboy type who eventually settles down with Eliza and has a kid but Ryu is a world warrior he just wanders the world trying to find the best fights. Uh, you know, nothing means anything to him but the fight. And then Akuma was the guy who was trained by their master before them, who went off to become basically like an evil demon guy and kind of shirked all the ways that he learned to, to live from Goken. So supposedly, Akuma comes back after Goken trained Ryu and Ken, Akuma comes back and kills Goken in a fight. Like, they have a duel and he kills him. And that's when Ryu and Ken are like, well, now we got to track down Akuma and stop him because he's crazy asshole with demon powers, you know. I don't know what they thought they were going to do, kill Akuma. I don't know. And I don't know what happens to the plot either because it's so convoluted. <clears throat> you never actually know what happened. You never make heads or tails of it. Dan the Man, thank you for a $2 tip. Cool. All right. Let's uh let's end the show, everyone. Thanks for a chill podcast. A lot of to get caught up with today, right? Tomorrow I'm sure I'll be telling you all about this DLC. Any other news? But oh no, wait, there's no podcast tomorrow. There's no podcast on Sunday. I can't do one because we have to do this Xbox React so early that I can't I can't do a podcast. So just to forewarn everybody, tomorrow we gotta be up bright and early around nine. Uh, around 9 30 a.m pacific time i'll be live over on the dsp reacts channel with my live react to xbox showcase all right there's no podcast tomorrow you come here in the morning you're going to be sitting here alone by yourself very sad okay just to forewarn you <laughs> all right all right everyone thank you so much great show if you're here live, I hope you'll stick around and hang out with me as we check out the Alan Wake DLC. If you're not here live, you're watching on demand, I wish you the, uh, a nice day. And maybe you should check out some of my stuff that I've been doing with the reacting and the Alan Wake and all this stuff. Should be good stuff, all right? Thank you, guys. See you Monday for the next episode of the show.